it's the Trailer Island Podcast. We're back on another Wednesday. Meow, 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 meow. Woohoo! And that was Steve. And I guess Matthew, would you like to join in on that? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, oh, well, such such refinement. Like a fine wine that's been left out in the sun, you are. Well, I have been left uh, out in the sun. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, it's another, how are we doing? Good, good, yep, great. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm heat stroke, but yeah, yeah, other, yeah. other than that, really good, yeah. Mm. Seen double a bit. The Australian summers are a beautiful thing. <sighs> I mean, uh, island summers. Well, you know, we're we're, we're Australians, like I stuck out on the island. That, oh, that's, okay. That, like you know, that's we're claiming of, ownership of the weather. Yes, right. yes. Mm, I, okay. I put my flagpole okay. in the sand, and um, we're we're Australian mm. the island. Yeah, I can't do an Australian accent, so I'm afraid we'll just have to. Actually, yeah. Oh, can you suffer. try? Oh, you have to give me something to say though. Um, look at that. Okay, we could do better. Uh, I and I'm not going to do it because the music's still going, so okay. we can't cut it out. <laughs> so <laughs> say, where is Harold Holt? Where's Howard Holt? There you go. Mm, that's nice. <laughs> what was that? I was that was awful. Is what that was. I, was like, I can't do one. I told you I can't oh, do you one. Say, uh, yeah, uh, we can't talk do. about films and their trailers. We talk about the movies and their trailers. I don't, oh wow! This came out more English. Oh no! That was just I. Yeah, I'm just yeah. gonna fade the music out and pretend that I could edit that out. Uh, Welcome to the weather forecast here on the BBC. There you go. There's a sound bite for all the fans at home. Uh, this week we are doing an Amazon. It's another Amazon film, but it's actually out. It's just just been released, hasn't yes, it? Yes, and yeah. this one instead of like being one that was going to be released in the cinemas, I think this is made for Amazon, isn't it? Right. This one. Okay. I'm assuming so because when we when I watched it, it came up with Amazon Studio. They have that really decadent, yeah, over the top logo at the start. Now, so I'm assuming this was not meant for cinema release. So it's it's interesting that this is the. Um, the world we live in. I, I still I can't get my head around this idea of a film, which which films are expensive to make, and this idea that it never goes to cinema. It just seems odd to mm. me. Mm. Mm. Well, that film is sure we're yeah, we're yeah, going yeah. to be talking about Uncle Frank. Happy birthday, Daddy Mac. Well, that one's wrapped up so nice it must be from Frank. Electric shoe polisher. Next. I never knew why Daddy Mac was so mean to Uncle Frank. He was the kind of person I wanted to be. Smart and funny and considerate. You're going to be the person you decide to be. You're going to be the person everyone else tells you are. You get to choose. Can I come visit you sometime? Hi, I'm Frank Smith. Oh my God, Beth, nice meeting you. Frank, don't tell me you were coming. That's because he doesn't know. He doesn't know. Oh, well, okay, this is going to be very exciting. How do you know Uncle Frank? He's my roommate. Wally and I lived together we have for 10 years never known anybody who was gay before. Of course you have. Claw director of church. Mr. Jiggerson? But he's so... What? Religious. Ah! Hey, Mom. How? Oh. Heart attack. Just out of nowhere getting into the car. <laughs> you need me for this. You know you do. No, Wally, you're not coming. We can take turns driving. Are you the stupidest man alive? Obviously. Look who I'm with. Did you always know you were gay? I always knew I was different. Wally? Oh, hey. You forgot your razor. You rented a car. Isn't it snazzy? Yeah. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell anyone in the family about me. You want to stay by yourself in a motel? Uncle Frank is staying there, too. So is Wally. Who's Wally? What is the relationship between the two of you and the young lady over there? Oh, she's my niece. I'm his nephew. Well, that doesn't sound right. That sounds wronger and wrong. You're not going to run away from this your whole life. Right! You need to be part of your family. I don't want to be a part of my family. So when you told me I should be what I want to be, that was just bold. Now that conversation changed my life. That movie is not that upbeat. That, uh, yeah, that really makes it seem like a really nice, well, yeah, like a rom com, doesn't it? Well, I suppose this is the like this. I think this is where superhero movies and big action block, block, blockbusters have got it right. Okay, they know how to make a trailer, right? That isn't that isn't literally just a synopsis condensed into two minutes. Oh that, yeah, that that, that is tra- the whole movie. Yeah. Yeah, in the trailer, that's the whole movie. Except the fact that, despite what that trailer feels like, <laughs> it is not that ha- happy, happy and upbeat. No, it's it's pretty full on in places. Um, so, from so Paul Bettany's in this, mm-hmm. who is a great actor, and he is a superhero. He's mm-hmm. Vision, isn't he? In um, the uh, the Avengers, so he's probably 
this is sort of a vehicle for him, I would say. This is sort of his film, I think. Is that fair to say? I don't know about that. Um, but I, I, just, I, don't, I don't know what this film, if this film knew what it wanted to be about. It's like it's trying to tick a lot of boxes. Oh, I would disagree. I thought it was very concise. Well, let's, let's hmm. clarify what the yes. film's about first. So Paul Bettany is Uncle Frank. He is a mm-hmm. titular character. It is set in the 70s and... He is a gay man in the. He's living in New York. However, his family is from what I assume is the Deep South, where this is particularly frowned upon. South Carolina, I think. Yeah. Some, something like that. Yeah. They all sound like Daniel Craig in Knives Out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and so, in the trailer, it's quite clear that I, there's sort of two main characters ish. It's him and his niece. Yeah. And his niece goes to New York to catch up with him where she discovers that he's gay. And obviously he's kept that from a lot of his family throughout the years because he's worried about the um, the bite back, which mm-hmm. we are shown later in the film why he feels that way. And there is a death in the family. His father dies. Now that is, again, in the trailer. So as Steve, you were saying, we get a lot of the film oh, yeah. in this trailer and it's him heading home. And sort of all the stress and tension of all of that. And it's funny, that that last bit where he's heading home is definitely Act 3. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of, it, it takes a while to get to that point. And you know what? I didn't mind that because I saw that it was a 90-minute film. It was quite mm-hmm. short and concise. And I was like, this didn't need to be any longer than that. And I really appreciated for... The amount of story that they're really, really able to condense into that time. They do cover yeah. a lot of ground. I, I would definitely say that road trip element was probably the most successful because suddenly you do have to you just have, what, three characters in a confined space. So, you, you know, you start peeling back layers of backstory and that kind of stuff. So that was cool. But it is interesting that sort of the father dying is in the trailer because it's not that early in the movie. It's pretty... Probably halfway no, it's through. About halfway yeah, through. And it, it takes a long time. It could have been... A good be a good complication to add to the story if you didn't know it was going to happen. But when you watch the trailer, you're like, "Well, yeah. I, I know that all this stuff's going to happen, mm-hmm. and I know that he's going to have to then go back to uh, his family and and sort of deal with that." And it's like, "Well, why did you sort of? If this is your movie, why not try and preserve some of the surprises in that in those those twists and turns?" Yeah, I do agree with that. You can tease out the drama a little bit more. Mm. Uh, we don't really need to see that. You know, the father is a source of conflict. I think. If you just advertise the fact that this is a movie about a gay man set in the, in the seventies, that I think that's like conflict enough, right there. <laughs> I think. Well, yeah. I, I suspect that the problem that they face with this, if you look at the trailer and didn't have the bit about the conflict with the father, it would have appeared as to be like a quite sort of just a happy go along film with mm-hmm. a guy just you know facing some issues throughout the day. Um, I don't know. I, I was. I, the I'm, trailer mis- <sighs> definitely misled me. Not so, again, not the story, but the tone. Yeah, there, the, there, are, there are sequences in this movie, and and like the the acting's really good in this. Oh, the, phenomenal! The performances mm. are, are quite good, um, and you know they deal with a lot of stuff like alcoholism as well, and sort of all these sort of other domestic this, violence, domestic yeah. violence, yeah, yeah. and all yeah. this other stuff, and they don't shy away from any of it. So it, it yes, the, yes, this film does have its moments of comedy or sort of lighter moments, but it's pretty heavy when it when it does go dark. Yeah, those, I, I found it a bit sort of like, okay, do you want to like calm down a little bit? There's some really heavy themes, you know, about uh, suicide and, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. and all those things. And I guess I found it quite interesting in, in this that the whole concept of him being a gay man was kind of, yes, it was the catalyst for the tension with him and his father, but mm. kind of inconsequential for the rest of I, everything I, else going that's on. That's what I found a little bit um, interesting I did. I, I didn't. I thought there would be. A, it seemed like the father wasn't going to be the only complication, and yeah. and as soon as they sort of come to this, this this uh, this obstacle, I wouldn't say it falls apart, but it definitely takes the easy turn on the way out. Yeah, and that's why I felt I mentioned earlier about ticking boxes. Mm-hmm. Is I thought well, if we're going to do this story about you know this is obviously you've got your mon your one character, but you then have to think about all the other gay people back in the 70s who were persecuted or, or whatever. And they've even got an international aspect yeah, um, yeah. from Wally and so the, the executions that were... Ha- I forget what country he's from. Saudi Arabia. Is it Saudi Arabia? And, but it sounds like they were trying to just sort of make sure that everyone knew that all this stuff happened. Like, okay, so, the, you know, we had... In Saudi Arabia, we had executions and in the States, uh, I think it was illegal still at the time, I think. Yeah, uh, in some, in in some, some states, perhaps. And it just felt to me like 
worry about having one one character have his own problems, but don't make him represent everyone who maybe went through this at the time. That's what it felt like to me. Was it was he was meant to be this kind of metaphor for all the people back then who had to go through it all. I didn't take it as that. I I um I, I really I did see the social aspect of this and, and it trying to say something about the the time we live in now and and back then as well. But I really I thought this was a film primarily about Frank's character and 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 the uh, messages we were getting about uh, Wally and and homosexuals in Saudi Arabia. I felt like that was more adding to Frank's anxiety than anything else. Yeah, you know, okay. if 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 someone can be that persecuted in another country, what's to stop that happening in my own country within my own family? And it sort of explains why. He is the way that he is about yeah. his anxiety towards his own family. Which, I mean, the the anxiety they, they give Frank in this movie, I thought was the the best part about it. I, I, I absolutely adore the way they approached it. I thought it was gut-wrenching at points. And, and it really did hit me for six. Uh, mm. Yeah, no, I mean, Paul Bettany's performance is really good. And, and there are moments where, you, you know, you do, you really feel for him, as you're meant to. But, yeah, I, I think maybe... I mean, I've only seen it the once, but I felt to me it was there was a little bit of preaching going on. Is mm-hmm. how I, is how I would best describe it. And we were talking about um, Birds of Prey um, a few episodes ago, mm. and how it's an all female cast, but they don't. It, that's not the big thing. It's just they just get yeah. on with it. And this one, I think, could have been perhaps stronger in getting its point across in in that kind of element. It's not you know not preaching, but just sort of saying just just sort of getting on with it, you know. And yeah, well, this this was. It's an interesting point because the way the film deals with homosexuality in this is that it's kind of, it's not, that's not what the film I feel like is really about. It's about him and his family. Like the whole Mm -hmm. thing about him being gay is kind of inconsequential to some of the real core themes of the film. Yeah. I mean, I suggest that the core theme really, as cliche as it sounds, is just always be yourself. Yeah, which is what they. There's a conversation yeah. those characters actually yeah. have a number of times. So yeah, I, I do get where you're coming from. Do you yeah. feel like you could put any other social identity issue um, in I, there and still have the same sort of movie? I, I'm not sure because it's a lot of. I mean, the catalyst for the film existing is the fact that his father mm-hmm. has cast him out as someone that he just sees in an, as an abomination, mm. and I feel like um, that's probably you know. In that, in the context of their family situation, was going to be the strongest thing that would cause their family to be torn apart like that. Mm. But in saying that, just the father's character and how terrible he is shout as a person. Stephen, shout out to Stephen Root on that one, because to Frank, oh my word, you do I was hate just him, like, don't you? like, oh, is there going to be a moment of yeah. resol- you know resolution? Is something going to come of it? And it just. <laughs> punches you yeah. in the face mm-hmm. with just nah that's mm. not happening here and oh man did that that feeling and that that moment in the film is just heart wrenching that was that was possibly my favorite scene yeah. in the film like that really i felt myself like again leaning for like what's the mm. essentially what's the verdict going to be and i don't want to give again we don't want to give too much away is that, are you talking about the scene with the uh, the reading of the will yeah oh uh, as soon as as soon as that <laughs> happened and I, as soon as the lawyer said, oh, I, you know, the part of the will and said testament is that he wanted to make sure that all the children were here in the same room and I just, all, all the family was in the mm-hmm. same room and mm-hmm. I just went, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then what happens, happens. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, it just, oof. Paul, uh, I mean, yeah, again, we'll sing Paul Bentley's praises, but his his wordless reaction to that whole thing. Oh, you could feel how uh, like, just tense yeah. he was and how, because yeah. he just, yeah. he just, well, yeah, we've sort of given away, but he just sort of bolts, doesn't he? Yeah. And it's it's mm-hmm. such a good performance. That's what I really like about this is that everything feels really naturalistic. Like just the conversations, I know, Matt, you were talking about before, but I was like, I had to have subtitles on some of this. Oh, uh, that, that's m- probably more, I, I'm just not very good with accents. It's not a, <laughs> oh, well, we established that. Well, we've established early, that. It's, we? <laughs> it's not a negative thing towards the film by any means. No. But I found the American accents, personally, I needed subtitles. But that's, that's just me. You're that's used not to a bad Paul thing. Paul Bettany being natural Paul Bettany, aren't you? Uh, yeah, with his wonderful British accent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just wasn't used to. Uh, his accent's actually really good in this, I should say, though. Like, it's very consistent. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. And I, I, re- I really enjoyed the 
supporting cast in this. Yeah. Beth, does she go by Beth in the film? What is she? She's uh, Betty, then she's Beth. That's right, because Frank tells her, you know, you can be, you know, yeah. change your name if you don't like it. And that's she sort right. of changes it a little bit. But my absolute favorite character of this film is Wally. Yeah. Is he, Frank's partner. He's definitely some much needed positivity mm-hmm, in the film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, yeah, he is the, for lack of a better term, comic relief or perhaps yeah. dr- dramatic relief. I don't know. I think he, provi- he provides an example of someone who is pretty comfortable with his own with his own yeah. being. I think yeah. it's fair to say that he suffered more severe persecution. I yeah. mean, he's had to flee his own country. Yeah. And and he's clearly he is he's handling it much better mm-hmm, mm-hmm. than uh, what's Paul ben, uh, Frank of course it is Frank, like, yeah. the film's called Uncle Frank <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> oh dear um, but yeah it's it's good to sort of see to have those two up against each other and you can sort of compare mm-hmm. how they're both mm-hmm. sort of dealing with what they're going through I one criticism I had was um, this is this is without a doubt a, a, an excellent uh, what they would call actors film. Where mm-hmm. I think any actor sitting down to watch this would just enjoy it for the for the perform- performances. It would yeah. it would be a formative thing. I didn't like the narration. I thought the narration was null and void. I thought the narration really only existed to to maybe uh, bolster so- Sophia Lillis. Lillis's character. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's there's, actually, there's narration in this. Yeah, isn't I, actually, I was just yeah. thinking. I forgot that there was narration, and I but I do remember now when I was watching this. I'd forgotten that there was stuff at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So when it came in at the end, I thought, oh, that's a bit <laughs> yeah. weird having narration now. It didn't really need it. Like the, no. the character performances in this were so good, it didn't really need to happen. No, no, I, I would agree with that. Mm-hmm. Now, we're, we're sort of talking about aesthetics here. This film is actually shot really well. Beautiful. Oh, it's fantastic. Beautifully shot. And, you know, it is a period piece. It's 1973, I think, is the year it's set. Yeah, I think so. And um, it's just great seeing you know, all the old cars and that. They've done such a good job of recreating. Well, I wasn't there, obviously, but they've done such a good job of recreating that period as well. It's, it's nice to look at. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm really glad this film didn't do is on the road trip, how often do you expect something to go bad on a road trip mm-hmm, like yeah. they're going to get shot at or something because people work out that they're gay they're going to be attacked or something I like that I thought they were going to be hounded by the police constantly. and I was yeah. just really glad that the film didn't fall into that trap of oh, okay here we go this thing's happening because it happens in every other social issue issue film where they just go oh here's a problem let's throw some uh, you know whatever at it well, I mean um, uh, Green Book two years ago the same same premise it's, it's, a, it's a gay man travelling cross country with Just his... I haven't actually seen Green Book yet. I've got it at home. Please don't well, spoil it. It's also a road trip movie and yeah, they, they come and they, there's hijinks. I've heard it's very good, but it's I good. haven't actually watched that one yet. Sorry, I don't mean to... Sorry, dear, <laughs> sorry, dear listener. That's I haven't fine. seen it, therefore you're not allowed to hear us talk about it. Well, I haven't seen it either, so you, you know it's two against one here. Okay. Mm. Good. <laughs> good. Maybe we we'll have to do... Because that's Viggo was, Mortensen, isn't it? It, is, it yeah. is, yeah. That's why I was so sure you are sort of alluding to that. I thought you might have seen it and that's No, why. no, no. I mean, because there's... I mean, how many road trip there's films are there in existence? There's yeah. thousands of those. Mm-hmm. And they, they fall into that... Tra- well, it's not a trap because sometimes it works perfectly fine. And that's, you know, on a road trip, things have to go wrong yeah a bit like in, um, Thelma and Louise that's a great one yeah but in this like you could expect that to happen so easily because they were traveling awfully slow <laughs> and you're just sort of you're just waiting for, <laughs> for something to come up in in the rear vision mirror and something to go wrong and what I'm really glad is that they just they didn't step into that and they just sort of kept to their the issues within it in the family yeah. and, and those sort of things. Well, actually, they good. subverted it because yeah, the, they the, did the one time that he um, Paul Bettany's driving with Beth in the car uh, going, you know, they're going to see um, his family, and he's got this car tailing him. Doesn't know who it is, and he's really suspicious. And mm. he stops it. The car behind him stops, and he goes over, and it's actually just his partner. Yeah, which is and Wally, it, which is Wally, which is actually a very funny moment. And so that was they and subverted that kind of trope. However, <laughs> the problem I had with that is, is that I wasn't stressed about that because I knew it was him because it's in the it was tra- the trailer. Yeah, I know they ruined it. So to enjoy it, the best you can is actually just don't see the trailer and go in cold. Yeah, it does, yeah. it does give away a little bit. The part that really hit with me is the stuff at the end when they deal with the idea of death and the family coming together and grieving together and such. Um, that's probably the point of the film that I felt that they handled that really well in that realistic sense. And that's the bit that really got me. Okay. I was just like, yep, this is, <laughs> mm-hmm, this is very close to home okay, with, with yeah. all those sort of things. Yeah, and when he hugs his mum. Oh, the the mum is again. I mean, it's another one of those things where in in these kind of 
situations. Oh yeah, the mum's always going to be forgiving, but they they do it well in this. Yeah. Um, I was oh. like, I was like, of all the characters, I mean, I think he's got an aunt as well, hasn't yeah. he? Or is it his aunt or is it his sister? I think it's like his great aunt. Great no, aunt. It's aunt. It's, it's, it's his aunt. aunt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, how lovely is she? And she's. Oh, that's the best. I wanted you're to, going to be able to do big warm hug. She yeah, was, you she you get the sense of realism is with that character, isn't yeah. it? With his aunt's character. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. his response to her as well, I think, is is the response of a lot of people these days with with uh, the older generation who just who can't who can't deal with. You know any abnormal changes to society? I was so sure that his little brother was going to be, because he's uh, the little brother is portrayed as this as this man with a really close relationship. I thought father. that that was a bit out of character. I I wasn't sure whether it was out of char- character or not. Um, you could definitely tell that his brother is fighting with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. liked it when they they go in for a hug, and you can tell that he's he's sort of like yeah. He's like I've got to do this to be supportive. But you can tell mm-hmm. he's not happy about it. And I thought that was played quite well. He seems quite quite mm. uncomfortable. I mean, uh, the other week I was watching War for the Planet of the Apes and um, one of the CGI apes is played by Steve Zahn. And it's just another good example of this being a, an actor's film because you can, you can see how varied Steve, Vaughan's, uh, Steve Zahn's performances can be from <laughs> bad ape to, <laughs> to the brother in, in this movie. Was he the brother uh, okay. in this? Because yeah. he, so, he was quite good as the brother. Your, your context is that, that he is the brother in this and is also... Bad one ape and War for the Planet of the Apes. He's okay. the bad ape. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, I'm glad we managed yeah. to tick that box today. Monkey. What is it? Ape, no kill? I forget what they say in that movie. Ape, don't kill other ape. That's it, yeah. Wonderful trilogy. Go well, watch those. Um, anyway... <laughs> <laughs> any final any final sort of notes on this um, one? I wondered at the relevancy of or the relevance rather of this movie being set in nineteen seventy three. Now obviously you're meant to compare it to how we live today, but yeah. I thought, well, if you wanted to do that, why is it not set today? I think it's to increase the anxiety. Like okay. uh, there, there were, you know, people were getting arrested for being homosexual back then, mm. right? They're not. That's not happening so much. It, it's not happening these days. Well, in Western society, no. for the most part, yeah, but there certainly is prejudice still out there. But oh, well, that, yeah, absolutely. I think the, the the crux of this is that he doesn't want to tell his family because he's he's so afraid of the the social repercussions uh and, and not not just not just uh, based in his family but uh, as a wider society mm. you you're definitely right that contextually it being in the 70s isn't really brought out as being a key point or issue to no, it. I, I felt that them and again I'm only nitpicking because I was sort of trying to figure out why they made that choice is because a lot of it is set in rural America Sometimes you kind of go, well, this could still be today. Like if they're in, yeah. if they're in a wood or just an old farmhouse, yeah. you go, well, that's you know, nothing here that really tells me that it's 1973. Mm. Uh, I think it also folds into Sophia Lelise's character as well. Yeah. In that, you know, women are trying to find their feet at that stage as well. It just sort of plays into the whole self identity sort of themes that were going on at the same time. Because she's crusading as a female of yeah. the family, going yeah. to university in New York. Mm. Really, I I don't know that. Yeah, again, that the date's consequential to the to think, the plot of the film. I mean, I just appreciate it. It gave the film some character as well. Yeah, it it, it um gave it uh, texture. Yep, it oh, was. De- oh, it definitely gave it texture. It was yeah. a texture layer yeah. to it uh, rather yeah. than a story layer. I feel I could be wrong. <laughs> I could be completely wrong. If the director wants to give us a call, or you know, oh please, yeah. or Paul Bettany, if you'd like to, I, I know, us. I know he <laughs> listens. Uh, uh, does, has anyone here seen August Osage County? No, no. The film that came out maybe five years ago. Mel Streep, Julie Roberts, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, Bench and Patch. Oh, Benedict Cabbage Patch. Yeah, my yeah. favorite. <laughs> uh, I thought I thought this movie was. A more concise version of that film. Okay, uh, that that film also deals with the fact that there's a, a there's a family unit coming back to home to deal with the death of a, a patriarchal figure who mm-hmm. was often abusive. Uh, also, that was that was set in modern times. Okay, right. Um, this this felt like a more and that 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 felt a little bit bloated, and there were too many characters, too many character arcs going on at the same time. Um, this one was a lot more concise, you know, focused on on two central characters, and, and it covered a lot of ground. Actually, speaking to that point, and and I know that um, this may be an unpopular opinion, but when I saw Brokeback Mountain, I saw it probably about three years ago. I didn't like it. Mm-hmm. I found it, especially the ending, was quite 
for again, I don't want, please don't sort of yell at us or yell at me for this, anyone <laughs> out there, but I found it a bit fluffy and sort of a bit like, uh, yeah, we sort of, the whole thing was that it was like the first major, I think I'm right in saying the first major movie to have two straight actors playing homosexuals, perhaps. But it was a big deal when it came out. It won Oscars yeah. and stuff. But I didn't like it all that much. I thought, uh, what, what was its point? Like, I, didn't, I couldn't understand its theme. But this film, I got the themes at least. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I thought this film was much better than Brokeback Mountain. Well, it's definitely not the yeah. first film with non... Oh, I, again, I, I think I, like I, something I'm, like The Birdcage with Robin Williams. Yeah. And- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, lo- I yeah I, no, but I, I completely understand yeah, what I'm you're saying. Sort of, yeah. Just, yeah. I, I don't know if it was or not. It probably wasn't. But anyway, the point is, is that film was such. There was such a big deal about that movie, mm. and and I watched it and thought, I don't. I really don't get it. And then this one, I was like, oh, actually, I mean, Paul Bettany's performance is terrific, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, it's quite compelling. I would suggest in this. All right. Well, so out of five, what uh, hair spiders? Uh, Hair spiders, oh yeah Absolutely, I think that's great Does that that work? That just freaked me out Okay, well contextually When when you watch the film That'll make sense (laughs) Uh, Who'd like to go first? Yeah, I'll go first Okay Uh, I'll give it um, Sort of tossing up Between a four and a four and a half The the narration really I I always get really critical About narration in a film I, I really need to question Whether why is this narration here? What purpose does it serve? Does it serve the story or not? And this one just so felt superfluous. Um, maybe, maybe just to keep Sophia Lillis's character a little bit more focused in the plot. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll go a, a four. I thought it was a beautiful film. I absolutely cried a little bit. You know, I thought it was just yeah. <laughs> it, it could be really brutal at times, really brutal, and I really appreciate that. I, I would I would agree with a lot of that. This de- I didn't cry, but I definitely felt like the sort of daggers in your heart mm. kind of thing as in a few moments in this film. Um, it, it's it is a really good movie. I think it's mm. it's make no mistake. This is a well made and well told story. I just found it a bit preachy. That's what it, my biggest complaint was like. Ah, oh, like I I know I know. Just tell the story. You don't have to preach to me. But maybe maybe I'm just sort of coming at it from a, the wrong lens. Maybe I don't know. But for performance alone, it's terrific. Um, I did really enjoy it. Um, I'm going to go three and a half because I don't like being preached to. But that's that's only me. <laughs> no, that's perfectly valid. I think I probably err a bit more with Steve and his opinion. I don't think I really need to add much to it. Like texturally, it's beautiful. The acting is superb. I really enjoyed it as an original film. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it was it was a nice breath of fresh air. I'll, I'll give it that much. Yeah, just just a break from something, you know, everything else, and yeah, because it's it's a mainstream release for them, like it's a flagship release. It's an original film for mm. their service for Amazon. So, which in any other you know timeline and <laughs> a universal timeline would probably would have been released on the big screen. Mm. Mm. Um. I mean, because it was a home release, it probably I wouldn't have gone to seen it in the cinema. Uh, well, I probably wouldn't have seen it if we weren't doing this podcast. So, but I'm glad. Yeah. But I'm glad I have seen it. Yeah, I, I yeah. completely agree with you on that. So I'm really happy that I've seen this film, and so I'm going to go with a four as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What, I, did you, what did you give it, Matt? Uh, three and a half. Three and a half. So eleven and a half out of fifteen. That's not bad. Pretty, that's pretty good. Yeah. Not bad yeah. at all. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. I get that reference Great now. Great success. <laughs> Great success. <laughs> hey, we've been the Trailer Island podcast where you can catch us every Wednesday where we talk about films and their trailers. Did the trailer... No, wait. Did the film... Yes. ...deliver what the trailer promised? And I think this Absolutely one, in this circumstance. Absolutely. Yeah. Except for the whole, you know, the trailer's a bit more uh, joyful than mm. potentially the film is. It's a bit, it's a bit, bit more happiness in there. <laughs> hey, you can find us on all, well, most of the socials, I think. You can hit us up on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, there might be a Twitter. There is a yeah, yeah. Ad Island trailer. I, uh, uh, haven't got him yet. We will, <laughs> though. And um, there's a YouTube. If you want to, if you want to listen to this podcast on YouTube, there's a YouTube channel as well. Put that you, premium subscription to use. <laughs> yeah, it's about time. But you can you can get us for free anyway. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's I think that's a wrap, boys. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Can mm-hmm. I get out of the sun now, please? Because I'm really starting to like crackle. <laughs> it's not good. You look tasty. No. You're, ah, stay away. You're reflecting more sun than we're absorbing, which is, uh, yeah. you know, is good. You're a nice pasty brown. <laughs> is that possible? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> like peanut butter. <laughs> I do like peanut butter. 
<laughs> okay, this is getting weird now. Okay. <laughs> All right, we've been the Trailer Island Podcast. I've been Alex. I've been joined by... Matthew. And Steve. And we'll catch you next week on the next episode of the Trailer Island Podcast. Good night. <laughs>